Hi, I'm Xiang Yu. In this video, we are going to learn how to play the board game Everyday Computing. In this game, you are just a freshman coming to the colorful university life. In the next three years, you need to make a balance among five different dimensions of life. Class, optimization, exam conquer, social connections, relationship, complexity, and physical intelligence. First of all, let's check what's in the box. First, boards. There are three boards in the box. This is a main board consisting of five dimensions. Around the main board is a scoring track tracking each player's points during the gameplay. The other two boards are related to five different algorithms where you can use your algorithm power to get benefits. Second, cards. There are a total of 52 cards in the play including 50 algorithm cards, two deadline cards, and there are five sets of player heads. Each algorithm card contains two attributes. The color represents the dimension of the card corresponding to the five dimensions on the main board. For example, this card is orange, so it represents the orange dimension, physical intelligence. The description represents the algorithm of the card, which you will need to interpret using the knowledge you have learned in the course. For example, based on the content, we know that it's a recursion card. If you cannot figure out which algorithm it is, don't worry. You can always find this help card and scan the code which will take you to the help page. Enter the card number at the bottom right corner of the algorithm card to check which algorithm the card belongs to. You can also use a link to review the knowledge about this topic. But of course, we highly recommend you to remember the algorithm components. Lastly, the number in the bracket is the player index number. For example, the index 5 means the card is available for a 5-player game. We will explain this in more detail later in the game setup. Next, wooden cubes. These wooden cubes are player tokens. There are 20 tokens of each color with five different colors. Lastly, treasure cubes. These little blue cubes are used on the graph algorithm board, and we will set them up shortly. Now we have gone through the box. Let's take them out and set up the game. First, place the main board in the middle of the table and the two algorithm boards beside. On the graph algorithm board, put the treasure cubes on the blue marks. Next, each player picks the tokens of your preferred color and put one of your tokens at zero in the scoring track on the main board. Now, let's set up the cards. First of all, take out the two deadline cards. Depending on the number of players in your game, there are different rules for setting up the algorithm cards. Do you remember the player index number on the algorithm cards? It's time to check them now. If there are five players in your game, keep all the cards. If there are four players in your game, remove all the cards with index 5. If there are only three players in your game, remove all the cards with index 4 and 5. In other words, just keep the cards with index 3. After that, shuffle all algorithm cards and deal one card to each player, facing down. Then, put some face-up cards beside the boards. The number of face-up cards should be twice the number of players. For example, if you have 5 players, place 10 cards facing up. Now it's time to create a draw deck. Divide the remaining algorithm cards evenly into 3 piles, and slide the 2 deadline cards into 2 different piles. Then stack the 3 piles up, making sure the one without the deadline card is on the top. Now we are ready to play. We will begin the first year of the game by randomly selecting a player to start. Players will take turns in clockwise order. In your turn, you can choose only one action, either draw a card or play cards. If you choose to draw a card, you can either draw a face-up card or the top card from the draw deck. You can only draw one card, and after you draw, your turn is over. If you choose to play cards, you can play cards by color or by algorithm. You have to follow one of the following rules. Rule 1, you can play by color. You can play one or more cards with the same color. Rule 2, you can play cards by algorithm. You can play the at least two cards with the same algorithm. This is more challenging because you need to interpret the algorithm on the cards. For example, this will not be a valid play because they are neither the same color nor the same algorithm. After playing cards, follow these steps to gain points. First, parallel computing. 
based on the number of cards you played, you can earn parallel computing points. Check the parallel computing table on the main board for the points you can earn. For example, if you play only one card, you earn zero. If you play two cards, you get one point. If you play three cards, you get three points. Remember, whenever you get points, move your token on the scoring track. Second, put one token into a dimension. You can choose one color from the cards you played to put one token in. There is a restriction here. The number of tokens in the dimension that you are going to choose must be smaller than the number of cards you just played. For example, you play three cards of the three different colors by the same algorithm, blue, purple, and green. And you already have three tokens in the blue dimension, two in purple, and none in green. In this case, you will only choose to put your token in purple or green, but not blue. Remember, no matter how many cards you play, you can just add only one token into one dimension. Lastly, if you are playing by algorithm, you can trigger your algorithm power to get additional benefits. We will explain these benefits in detail later. After you play cards, these played cards should be put into a discard pile, and they will not be used again until the next year. And more importantly, the remaining cards in your hand will be face up around the boards, which can be drawn by anyone in their turns. When the first deadline card is drawn, set it aside and ignore it as you always do. First deadline. The player can draw another card from the deck and continue the game. When the second deadline card is drawn, the year ends immediately. All players must discard their cards and start the end of year calculation. Let's look at the dimensions one by one. The player with the most tokens in each dimension will earn all the points. If there is a tie, add up the scores and divide the points evenly. For example, in this case, if it's the end of year one, yellow gets two in exam. If it's the end of year two, yellow gets eight in exam, black gets two. If it's the end of year three, yellow gets eight, black gets eight, red gets two. In this case, if it's the end of year three, yellow gets eight, black and red ties. Both of them get eight plus two divided by two, that's five. After the calculation, reset the game for a new year. Keep all tokens in the dimensions on the main board, and of course, the tokens in the scoring track. Shuffle all algorithm cards and deal one card to each player. Place some face-up card beside the board, still twice the number of players. Insert the two deadline cards and set up the draw deck. The player who draw the second deadline last year becomes the starting player in the new year. Well, if it's the end of the third year, the game ends. The player with the highest score wins. Thank you for watching so long. Let me tell you a secret. To win this game, you have to somehow make use of algorithm power. When you play cards by algorithm, you can gain extra benefit by applying corresponding algorithm power. Now it's time to introduce them one by one. Recursion. This is the recursion board. For each recursion card you play, you can run one step further in this black box. For example, if you play two recursion cards, you can move your token two steps. Once you reach the final output, you can earn eight points immediately. Also, you can earn a bonus that you don't need to discard cards in this turn. In other words, you can keep the left cards in your hand this turn. After completing the black box, you can restart the process from the beginning. You can accumulate the progress throughout the three-year game. So, at the end of the year, keep all the tokens on the recursion board. Graph. This is a graph board. You can earn points by winning the treasure cubes or finishing the maze. For each graph card you play, you can move one step from one node to another in the maze. If you arrive at a node with a treasure cube, you can take it and get three points. Once the treasure cube is taken from a node, players do not need to stop there again. When you arrive at the final destination, you can get six points. Lastly, if you could not get any points in this turn, that is, you didn't get any treasure cubes and you didn't reach the destination either, then you can draw a card from the draw deck. Dynamic programming. This is dynamic programming, or DP board. If you play DP cards, you can earn benefits by looking up this table. The row represents the number of cards you just played, and the column represents the number of dimensions in which you have tokens. For example, 
I just played two DP cards and I have tokens in three dimensions. So I can pick a face-up card. Remember, the effect in this table is backward compatible. So in this example, instead of picking a face-up card, I can also choose to draw a card from the draw deck. Cartography. This is the cartography board. For each cartography card you played, you can move one level up on your authentication protocol, or AP. Then you can perform a security check. Choose an opponent who is weaker than you in AP. Randomly take one card from the opponent. The opponent draws a card from the draw deck as compensation. At the end of the year, the player with a higher AP can break ties in the calculation of scores of all dimensions. If two players are on the same AP level, whoever gets a level earlier is stronger. You can remember this by stacking up the tokens at the same level. Whoever is at the bottom has the strongest AP. You need to reset your AP levels every year. So before starting the next year, remove all tokens from this board. Greedy. Last but not least, this is a greedy board. You can make your greedy choices based on the number of greedy cards you play. For example, if you play three greedy cards, you can choose one of the following power. Move two steps in the maze. Run two process in the black box. Draw two cards from the draw deck. Upgrade two levels in AP or immediately earn three points. That's all. By the way, during your gameplay, you can refer to these player aids anytime to check the game rules or watch this tutorial video. Good luck! Enjoy everyday computing.